dive into how corrupt the war party is. Um, the first article I brought you on to talk about is, is this one on an Axios report. And the headline is Trump's post-election coup was against his runaway generals. I find that very fascinating. It's a really good headline um, because while people were talking about this, this coup, this post-election coup, um, there was an actual coup trying to be attempted that you and I may have actually supported. <laughs> It's, 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 it's incredible because I, you know, as you remember, after the November elections, there was a huge shakeup at the Pentagon and the, Trump was bringing in a lot of his allies and forcing a lot of resignations. I think there are five resignations, but that included the secretary of defense, Mark Esper. And he brought in people like Doug McGregor, who is a, a, a brilliant retired colonel who has been critical of the U.S. war policy since the beginning. I met I met Doug back like in the 9/11 period, you know, and I've been friends with him ever since because he he has just he has felt, you know, rightly that every step that the uh, the military has taken since 9/11 has been a wrong one. So he comes in with the with with Trump to try to shake things up, you know, after the election. But the, the reporting that was going on in, in Washington was that Trump was probably maybe planning some sort of coup and you know, installing all of his friends that suddenly he would say, I'm not leaving, you know, and I got the military's you know, support. And there were a lot of uh, op-eds and you know, speculation about that. And then it turns out what we all believed all along is that he really wanted to get out of these wars you know, he inherently believed that, but also he felt like it was his revenge against these generals like General Mattis and General H.R. McMaster and General Milley, who is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and in Mark Esper, uh, who is former military too. And he's basically saying, you know what, I'm going to get out of all these wars before I leave. And that includes Afghanistan, that includes Iraq, Syria, Germany, and um and what was the other one? Uh, Syria, Iraq, Germany, Africa, Africa. Africa. And he and he handed uh, he had his guy hand Doug a, a memo. And this is all in the Axios report saying, I, I want to get out of all of these places by the time I leave office. And Doug's like, you know, that's a tall order, but let's do it. You're going to have to you have to craft an actual presidential memorandum and order, get it, you know, have it signed. And then then we can execute this, sir. And what happened was it, it, it got passed around to all of the, the top officials and they said, we're not doing this. We can't do this. So the actual memorandum, once it started going through different hands and the, the guys got to, to Trump and pointed all the ways that he wouldn't possibly be able to do this, the memorandum, with that, that, that the final one that was signed was actually a much watered down piece of um, uh, you know uh, letter uh, to his generals. And basically saying, okay, we'll get out of Afghanistan by the 15th, but only by 2,500 troops. And, you know, uh, we got out of, we, we shifted troops out of Somalia, but they're going to other places with the, the orders in, for Germany never, you know, were never finalized or they, or they weren't finally executed by the time he left. And Syria was never mentioned. And there was a modest drought down in, in, in Iraq. So what happened was the generals got their way, you know, so I had written that piece because that's what I got out of it, it was a, it was a very exhaustive report um, that told that basically get, gave you the feeling of all this, all this back channel stuff that's going on, and how the generals really um, reacted poorly to to Trump. But some of it was his own doing. I mean, Trump uh, was, a, as you know, a divisive character, his foreign policy didn't jibe with these military guys who did not want to leave these wars. They felt like it would be a disaster if we got out of Afghanistan or totally got out of Afghanistan. They still believe that. And so, you know, when it came down to it, you know, he was outnumbered and, uh, but not outranked. Uh, so, you know, there you go. It's, it's an interesting piece of, of, I guess, what you would call palace intrigue. Uh, but it does give you some insight on how powerful the military is. And for, you know, even up against the commander in chief, they're able to stymie and thwart and stall uh, any efforts to get out of wars that they feel they need to stay in. 
And I'm afraid that that might happen with Biden. Biden seems to have really laid down a marker in terms of getting out of Afghanistan uh, by 9-11, uh, but we'll see. There's a lot of violence erupting there today. Uh, I would imagine that there are a number of uh, military people who are approaching Biden at this very moment and saying, hey, we might need to stay. Uh, this thing is not looking too good. Things are falling apart. And it'll be a matter of, of Biden really holding his ground and saying, I said, we're getting out and we're getting out.